You know, it really is these breezy times that make me think about gaming. I mean, everything makes me think about gaming, but, but, but winter specifically reminds me of those good old days getting frostbite and dying in video game snow levels. And you know, no gaming genre loves snow more than well, platformers. Well, while it's definitely not a tradition, as some platformers are gonna lack that theming entirely, it's an aesthetic that immediately brings little harps and collection jingles into my brain. Even though I, I know that winter exists in other games, I, I play other games, I, I swear. I just think bringing snow and ice into the mix is a great reason for winter related gimmicks and, and visually it's a great change of pace and and can make for some seriously memorable levels before we get into it before we get a little rambunctious <laughs> I, I really do want to give all of you a, a merry Christmas never mind mind um uh Nice December, is it not? You no, know, it, 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 it really isn't. What is really nice? Mario. Super Mario games all, always stuff you into a winter paradise or a winter hell. Yeah, there, there have been a, a fair share of snow themed adventures in this series. And according to this video, I love it. Although I, I should say, yes, I. Uh, I, I, I am a fake fan and I haven't actually played every Mario game. I, I'll no doubt miss a few levels you love. Actually, here's the games I've played in Sightful. So yeah, this is just a, a blur whatever I can about the icy levels. Uh, going from least best to most best videos. So, so if, I, if I'm a bit unfocused, I'm not sorry. Oh right, also, no spin-offs, no car racing, no RPGs, not even any crossovers. Nope. First, I think we should look at the beginning, you know, uh, the roots. Uh, uh, um, uh, now, 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 that is the true beginning, a game that came out almost a decade after the franchise side. We're starting off real strong here, so get a hot drink, or like frozen yogurt if you're a homunculus. It's winter! For anyone who's not familiar with All Stars, it is a collection slash remake of all four original Mario games from the 80s. The Super Nintendo was not backwards compatible and Nintendo really wanted to fill in the barren Mario release schedule of Mario, no Mario, and still no Mario. Being able to work with such a multitude of colours, the advancement in power, it was an amazing idea. And the result was incredible. All Stars is genuinely the best way to experience these games. I myself grew up on these since I was four, so you can see why I hold it in such high regard. Now these aren't my favourite levels in the whole series, but 3-1, uh, 3-2, pretty much any level that used this aesthetic was always nice to see. When the the words Mario plus Winter enter the monkey brain, this is partially what comes out. First of all, let's look up. The sky's gradual colour change being represented by little rectangular shades to make it seem less flat. That is really nice. I don't know the proper terms for it because I'm an ignoramus. You just wouldn't get the same effect if it was a straight up gradient, although maybe the SNES wasn't capable of that. It probably was. Yeah, I am not reputable. There's something about combining that with a litany of 16-bit stars pulsing, as that's not all. Soft layers of snow have been tossed around the whole level, spreading to the start and end castles, as well as the sporadic fences you see here and there. It makes all of this feel very fantastical, especially after the more plain stage things we saw beforehand. Taking in all of that, and you have a visual flair that Stone Cold Gibran Austin always looks forward to. Despite the fact that many other levels were given makeovers, might I mention beautiful makeovers, it really does manage to stick out. Obviously, I'm not just here to babble about the aesthetic. It's about how they adjust the gameplay and level design to really immerse you with snowy mechanics. 
of which there are none. Yeah, there are no gimmicks here, that that is true. This is because Super Mario All-Stars was a bit of an accurate remake and did not alter the level design. So yeah, I'm kind of cheating here. No unique music or sound effects when you walk in the snow or blue ice goombas or something. But you know why it gets a pass and a spot here? The original 3.1 slash 3.2 didn't have any of this at all. It looked like that, so there's something to really admire about how Nintendo didn't need to make those additions. All it was was simply a touch of love that is uh, very missing from the new All-Stars collection. Obviously, after one came... Three? A great Mario game, one of the best 2D platformers probably ever. Mario 3 pushed the formula forward in many ways to gaming and the series. One of them was the introduction of world themes and <laughs> you all know which one I'm thinking of. Just to be clear, it's ice. It's, it's, it's the ice one. It's worth at least mentioning as World 5, yet again, changes the game feel and puts you on slippery platforms, making it harder for you to calculate your jumps. And of course, these were the very first snow levels in the series, so I, I respect that. However, most of these levels don't really strike out, uh, not aesthetically or even in terms of the level design. I'd like to talk more about one particular level that did, but it doesn't really use any winter mechanics? <laughs> so yeah. Honestly, I'm thinking of saving it to center a little discussion video around it. That could be fun. Outside of introducing those icy cold mechanics, uh, the level design is good, It's, uh, but it just kind of lacks the distinct memorability of Mario 3. Apart from this one, actually this one's kind of cool. So it does not get to be a part of my cool guy list. Apart, apart from this one, I remember that one, that one's cool. I like I like, I like how it's slippery and also not scrolling, it's kind of cool. It's, it's a cool idea. I don't uh, maybe maybe the new Super Mario games have tainted me with with how much they take from Mario 3. Speaking of the Antichrist, are you feeling the Christmas cheer yet? No, no, you, you're feeling numbness and coldness in the hands and you keep putting your ha hands in the, in the clothes to generate body heat. <sighs> Sucks, doesn't it? But, but get this, winter levels don't suck. Yeah, life is worth living because we have new Super Mario Bros. DS. I know, I know, new Super Mario Bros. is boring, it's stale, blah blah. If you say that, I don't like you as a person. While this first entry did have some issues, well, one of those being the overall lack of memorability, I think when you consider this was releasing right after Mario Sunshine and in terms of 2D, it was coming off of a world and technically Mario Land 2 after close to 13 years. To get their bearings on 2D Mario, it makes sense for it to look like this, to control like this, and to have level design like this. As a kind of launch pad for the new Super Series, it was the first of its kind. You can't excuse later entries, but you can excuse this one because I don't know why I like it. And yeah, I, I still don't have a capture card, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to emulate because... I'm an elitist. As a whole, World 5 is centered around snow, but it's 5-1 in particular that I adore. Because first of all, like, who, who the hell is this guy? What does it want? You don't know, you keep walking. And the big snow dog just launches a big white ball at you, although it's really, it's really not hard to dodge, it's, 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 it's not sweat, right? I just can't help but look, oh god, I can't help but be flattened, whoa, whoa, oh, the snowball landed and really just rolled into an even bigger, wow, okay, right, I give props for its due, because I honestly, I, I did not expect that. Keep progressing through, and yeah, it's business as usual, you get that new Super Mario Bros. flow we all love until you get to a mound of snow and that's just piled up and has sunk into the ground, it, it it wants to sink you. Nice idea to add that in as an obstacle, even giving the player a way around it if they have foresight. Kind of like winter themed quicksand. You even have to dodge the snow rats while uh, maneuvering around pigs shallow snow pits. And unlike the previous two stages I mentioned, it actually sounds like I'm navigating a snow field. Big old big Christmas trees, which might colloquially be known as evergreen conifers, spruce fir and pines. Yeah, I know my shit. 
absolutely invading the background. Sure, they don't really do anything unique with the aesthetic, but it's weirdly cheerful. Just glancing and seeing that in the background while you're dodging snowcats, stomping. Coopers and okay, yeah, absolutely trampled by more snow slipping off branches. Uh, the new series does get flack for its lack of innovation, but this truly didn't feel to me like it was something you could have encountered in Mario World or 3. A satisfying blend of winter mechanics, and there's nothing like it in the series. Or at least there wasn't before 2004. I, I, I am kind of unfamiliar with Mario Maker's single player levels and the Wii U. 2D games. And so, today was the day Jibran realised how little authority he had on any topic ever. Now that we've got the boring, outdated 2D ones out of the way, I've been aching to dive into the 3D Mario stuff. So let's begin with a game I hate. Okay, hate is a bit harsh. Mario 64 is a game that just never clicked with me, even compared to other 3D platformers from the era. Those other games hit the spot a lot more efficiently than 64 did. But there are things in life you just can't deny, like oxygen being a social construct. A oh, cool cool mountain being f***ing cool. An incredibly original way of designing a 3D level, especially for its time. This level meshes so damn well with Mario 64's mission based gameplay. It's a f***ing winter to Wonderland. The location is packed with missions that just make sense. For a snow location, get on a spiraling, delicate and terrifying ice slide, find and carry a snowman's head so it's like you can give it back to this goofball. And also wall jumping. To navigate the level, Mario is being told by the gods themselves to throw his body down this white mountain. This white mountain, of course, comes with a cute little ski lodge at the top. Although it is not hard to break into this establishment, and that becomes your way down if you want to risk the void. Your other choice is avoiding an evil, immortal snowman, and he's not even the exception, because there are two of them on the bridge. This is, of course, to keep you on guard and make navigation that little bit more difficult. And also, it's a, a breathing, indestructible snowman. God, it's, that has always stuck with me, but because for some reason it, it just makes sense. I don't question it at all, like, of course, two snowmen would be marching on a bridge like that, well, why the hell wouldn't they be? Mario 64 also marked the day. Nintendo dared to ask What if he raised an entire generation of sociopaths? Uh, tears of joy aside, I love this mission. <laughs> you just wander down to the bottom of the ICL and spot this huge penguin sitting in the most pathetic puddle. She wants her alive child back, so you need to search for them. And then she cries about how this does not look like this. Like it's so fucking stupid, but it's so stupid that it furthered how memorable Cool Cool Mountain was. That's not to mention the very chilly aesthetic and feeling that this stage greets you with. These low quality greenish bluish ice walls are sitting next to all that early 3D geometry and uh, sold things like the line of icicles on the roof of the ski lodge. With how little was possible in 1996, it's those small things that make the location that much more immersive. It makes you want to shiver just looking at it. The music is real cheery, although I always did feel it's more theme parky that it, that it is Christmassy. I, I can't say I've heard any other winter songs quite like it, and the song isn't trying to be grand, it's it's just fun. Kogel Mountain is a super memorable stage, and in a game I don't really enjoy, the level design is still something I appreciate. It wasn't the only snow level in Mario 64, the Snowman's Land is here too, and while it isn't but it's not as memorable as Cool Cool Mountain. Hell, I have to be honest, I, I forgot what it was even called bef before I, you know, started writing all of this. But you know, Cool Cool Mountain did follow the jolly winter trend that's been set here of being pretty cold, so I, I guess I... Um, wait, um... <clears throat> 
like it. Mario Galaxy is a really special game and that very much extends to the insane amount of creativity Nintendo presented with its galaxies. Galaxies were there to revolve levels around central ideas and one that goes above and beyond was Freeze Flame Galaxy. As a winter level, it doesn't feel particularly jolly or festive, but gameplay wise, right away you blast off. You land on the famed ice donut. What a nice starting point. Like first of all, it's an ice donut. It's definitely more distinct than the usual boring, bland Sophia we get. You're thrust into a chasing segment and with the addition of being able to dash and circle around thanks to the skating mechanic, you're kind of involved in a lot more twisting and turning. Your shape makes for a nice back and forth towards getting cut damn penguin, or in some cases, searching for big sharp icicles to crack open. Freeze Flame also hands us the Ice Flower, Sh such a great power up. I, I gladly would have taken more levels even if it was derivative. Making it so large, ice petals spring out on top of these boiling steam pipes is such a clever idea, creating platforming where it wasn't before. Avoiding that freezing cold water with ice skiing is an absolute blast and, and could be a genre of game on its own. Did you know you can triple jump? Or, or, or that holding ZL turns you around, letting you do a long leap? Local man is blown away that pressing buttons does things. Surprised mean that you could do that. What doesn't surprise me, however, is that Freeze Flame is gorgeous and graphically just stands out. Soft drops of snow while falling all over this clearly old structure. Vicious and chunky reds vibrating from the magma. Those crystallized sky blue glaciers that grow into these tiny pools. Everything is just so pleasant to look at. Then there are the moments where these elements collide with each other as the third star is constantly engaging you with the environment, blending gameplay mechanics together effortlessly. The first half of the level revolves around making your way through to basically identical yet opposite sections. The water and lava are two sides of the same coin and the objective on both sides is fundamentally the same. Get to that valve before the scary liquid murders you. I will never forget the revelation that it's only fire that can open the cold crutches of this door. Sigh. So then, ending it on with this thrilling, sweeping set piece of dangerously toasty ice skating, trying to not fall into a black hole by navigating a conveniently placed lava path so you can finally grab that star? Freeze Flame Galaxy is a spectacular collection of levels that make ice look fun and not seem like the death concrete that it is in real life. Easily one of the most fun galaxies and easily one of the best snow stages in any platformer. The 3D world has had something of a resurgence following the years of Odyssey, what with the recent Switch port. And after getting a more experimental game that harkens back to the style presented in the first two 3D titles, nowadays people are just being less nasty to 3D World. Sure, it definitely does stagnate at points, but dab if the game is not filled with some extremely enjoyable levels. Those are the levels that stick out to me like a big saw thumb. One of these purple thumbs in extreme pain is Snowball Park. And what a joy it is to play Snowball Park. It feels so genuine, it's like Nintendo said screw it and just wanted to make something that screams Christmas, screams winter warmth and proceeded to bust out something with tightly knit level design. Slipping on ice, bustling up these trees to shake the snow off, I'm just having fun playing it. I'm having fun seeing this. I mean, do you see this? I don't know, Snowball Park just radiates this magical feeling. It's the way the lighting is set up, it makes all of that frost and snow luminate in the dark, it gives everything this little shine, a little twinkle. That background is otherworldly. Like look at that question 
motion block. L look at the little yellow glow that it's giving off. Ah, oh man. And again, in the actual gameplay, the overall level design has this rock solid flow from beginning to end. Coming off of a castle level, it really cleanses the palette. Makes you want to get out there, dig your hands into the ground, and build a snow Reggie fils -Aimé. Cause look at me, I'm tossing big white snowballs around, then I'm picking them up and destroying the creatures with their own bodies. Not to mention how you get to sit and scrape comfortably in one of the best power-ups in the game, a f***ing boot with the guardrail on the bottom. You know, on my first time playing this game, speeding all the way through, it truly brightened up my mood that day. I never figured vehicularly dismantling Goombas in a shiny winter wonderland would be a distinct memory of the time I spent on 3D World. But it is. Super Mario 3D World is a very comfy platformer, and really, this type of level perfectly encapsulates that. Finally, we're at the end of the mainline series, uh, not counting Mario Maker or Bowser's Fury because. I don't really want to. Now, I wasn't sure about putting the Snow Kingdom in this little list. I probably could have ended it at 3D World, as I wasn't sure if the Snow Kingdom was even special enough, if it was Christmassy enough. Certainly, it would have been less trouble for me if I excluded it. But after slamming the game back into my Switch, diving through icy waters, and discovering a moon buried in a massive ice block, mentally crushing Peach just just playing the game, I am reminded again of why I love Mario Odyssey. Shiveria is just this hulking, curvy, snowy playground. Everywhere you look, patches of snow and glaciers. Mario is surrounded by water that looks like death. Like, I, I feel so scared whenever I have to cross it. It's cool to just stop and check Shiveria out, just to take it all in. Taking it all in means putting the brightness slider to the max. This area is a paper. It, it's ridiculous how bright it is. Wiping out Mams' snow with Cappy is the best thing. Just pushing it away. God, God that is satisfying. And taking over some snow cacodemon to blow forward wooden boxes, realizing that that's what the wooden boxes were for, figuring out how to get through a sweeping blizzard as fast as possible so I can beat this damn Cooper. It's just great. If this was all Shiveria had to offer, I'd still be pleased. But gloomy ice caves are sitting around, which along with a main moon had hidden moons, and discovering them by just screwing around and exploring made me feel like those guys that reached the top of Mount Everest, just, just not the ones I died. The cozy underbelly of the whole kingdom Shiveria town is where you'll find some cute round seal things and even a few guests. The sense of community here is so warm. The music, the soft pitter power when you walk in the snow, the big gaping hole in the floor. I seriously love these NPCs. They're, they're so adorable. They're so simple. They regularly concuss themselves. Yeah, the bouncing races. What a blast, huh? <laughs> As you can see, it is a blast to suck. I'm still struggling to reach first place, and it is not gonna happen. But you know, I, even though I'm constantly losing this, doesn't mean I'm not enjoying myself. Shaveria was a challenge to explore, rolling down snow cabins, peeking in every corner, to uncover some sneaky moon that's been sitting right under my eyes, masquerading as a nice witch to impress a hat. I said this before, but they released you into a freezing icy playground just like they released you into a dinosaur's home. Really, it's just exactly what you'd want from a winter level. The perfect level to play at this time of year is what I would say if I could replay anything in Odyssey. You just, that's, that's screw it, I'm starting another playthrough. And finally, I am ready to shut up now, y yep. You win or I win, I don't know. No one wins. Snow is great. It's also horrible. You ever notice how these games don't mention the black sludge that is produced from the aftermath? Or how much of a hazard frost is to my personal safety? No one gets- It is very slightly slippery. Propaganda is all around us, and if it's as good as Freeze Flame Galaxy, I'm sucking up 
every last piece of it. But while I do cherish the festive adventures that I just went on about, I do not care about your personal favorites, so definitely do not let me know which Rintro adventures from the Mario series you enjoyed the most. It would suck if you did that. Don't go into details so we can start a discussion. I'd hate that, you delinquent. Of course, we all have to decide at some point which snow stage was the best. Hmm, I don't know.